these organisms look pretty bizarre, but they all possess unique traits that help them survive in their environment. Where do these unique traits come from? Well, in order to answer that question, we have to explore an important evolutionary force known as natural selection. And natural selection is a type of evolution that results in better adapted populations. To explore natural selection, we're going to start by defining what a population is. A population is just a group of organisms that belong to the same species and are living in a particular area. For example, this group of horses. All of these are very similar organisms that can interbreed and they're in a particular environment. Now, in order to understand natural selection, let's look at some characteristics that populations possess. Uh, because populations are the smallest group that can actually undergo evolution. One characteristic of populations is overproduction. In other words, in a population, more organisms are born than can actually survive and reproduce. And this is because of limited resources, like food, habitat, or even mates. And oftentimes, limited resources will lead to competition among organisms. Another characteristic of populations is variation. Different individuals have different traits. And some of these traits are determined by DNA. And so these traits are said to be heritable. In other words, they can be passed down from parent to offspring because when a parent reproduces, uh, their DNA gets passed down to the child. So as we're studying natural selection, we're really dealing strictly with heritable traits. Now, where do variation come from? Why do organisms have different traits? Well, ultimately, it starts with the DNA. As we've learned in the past, the sequence of bases in DNA is the instructions for building your traits. Well, if you change that sequence, you change the instructions, and you potentially get a new trait. So ultimately, variation arises from mutations in DNA. And these changes are usually random. They're not purposeful, and they're not in response to a certain need in the environment. Now, another source of variation is sexual reproduction, because during sexual reproduction, uh, the genes from the mother and the genes from the father get shuffled and combined in the child. And so the child has a new combination of genes, which means a new combination of traits. Now, some of those variations can prove to be adaptations. For example, a polar bear's thick fur. Uh, this insect's body color and shape, which camouflages it against other leaves. And the color and the hump of a camel in a desert. All of these are traits that provide an ad advantage in a particular environment. And these are traits that the organisms inherit from their parents. Now, note the role of the environment here. The polar bear's thick fur is only an adaptation in its cold environment. If we were to put this polar bear in the desert, that thick fur is no longer an adaptation. It actually is probably a disadvantage. Uh, so in this way, the environment acts as a selecting agent. The environment determines whether a trait is an adaptation or whether it's neutral or whether it might actually be harmful. And this leads to the concept of fitness. Organisms with adaptations have more fitness. But in biology, fitness is a slightly different term. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't refer to how strong or how muscular an organism is. It refers to an organism's ability to reproduce. So let's take a look at Joe and Jim. Joe and Jim um, are equally strong and equally fast, uh, equally healthy. But Joe mates, has children, and those children mate and have more children. Meanwhile, Jim chooses not to mate, which is fine for Jim, and he doesn't pass on his genes to any offspring. Because of this, Joe is considered fit, and Jim is considered not so fit. In fact, he's not fit at all. So in evolution, fitness is a measure of one's reproductive ability. And the more offspring you have, the more genes you pass down, the fitter you are. And so this leads to the idea of differential reproduction, where individuals who have adaptations are going to be able to survive longer 
and thus reproduce more and pass down their traits. Uh, for example, in this population of insects, some of them are brown and some of them are green. Now, because they're living on a brown tree, the brown color is an adaptation and the green color is not. So the predator will tend to eat the green bugs. That leaves the brown bugs to survive and reproduce and have more brown baby bugs. So this is also known as survival and reproduction of the fittest. And you've probably heard of survival of the fittest, but the reproduction piece is key. Because if you don't reproduce, uh, your really great genes won't be passed down to offspring. So let's combine all of these ideas and finally explain what natural selection is. And we're going to do that using another population of insects. Now, these insects may look alike on the outside, but as you can see, inside, their DNA is a little bit different. In particular, these two insects have a mutation that gives them resistance to pesticide. Now, pesticide is a poison that farmers will sometimes use on their crops to kill insects that might eat the crops. So right now, these are just different traits. There's no pesticide around, so one's not particularly better than another. But let's say that the farmer decides to spray the crops with pesticide. Well, all of a sudden, this mutation becomes an adaptation because the pesticide is acting as a selecting agent. It's a part of the environment that makes this trait helpful. And so what will happen? Well, these guys die because they don't have resistance. These two survive because they've got the adaptation. And then they go ahead and they reproduce. So these insects down here are a new generation of insects, but they all inherited that mutation, that resistance trait from their parents. And as a result, we have a change in the population. This population, this second generation, has different traits. All of these guys have the resistance. Whereas the first generation in the population, only a couple of the insects had resistance. And this is evolution, a change in the traits of the population over time. As simple as that. It doesn't have to be the creation of a whole new species. It could just be a population that wasn't resistant and a later generation that now is. So here's the definition of natural selection. The environment will select for the increased survival and reproduction of organisms with adaptations. For example, in this scenario, the brown insects. That'll cause individuals in future generations to inherit advantageous traits and eventually make the population better adapted to its environment. All right, make sure that you have all key terms and diagrams in your notes. Uh, don't forget questions and strike themes, and finally take the poll.